But what I find interesting, um, just going back to Under Your Spell for just like a quick second, mm -hmm. the record, it's, it, it says that the, uh, the band's name is Intro. Right. On the record. Mm -hmm. Then you dropped your album in 93. But in 91, 92, you were working closely with Dave Jam Hall. Yes. And you had, uh, what was it? Uh, you had the track, you did a couple of tracks with Shinehead. Yeah, Try My Love. Try My Love and Baby I Can Make yes. It Right. Yep. Uh, and what was the other one? You did a, song, a remix version of uh, Jeff Red, You Called and Told Me. You Called and Told Me, yes. So was that like basically easing you into the industry before you dropped your record? Or what was that about? What was well, we the were story already, behind we were that? already, um, that was 92. That wasn't 91, that was 92 actually. Yeah. And we had just met Eddie F in 92, the winter of 92. Well, coming in with the fall of 92, we met Eddie F. And right. I think Jeff Red released that record in the fall, or it was already out already, and then we ended up doing a remix with Jeff. Mm -hmm. But Shinehead, um, we met him in Queens actually. We met him in Queens, he was living in Queens at the time, and he heard what we were trying to do, and he actually told uh, Eddie F, not Eddie F, but um, Dave Hall, Actually, you know, I know these guys. I want them on my record. Mm. So that's how we got on that record. We shined him. Wow. So we had a relationship with him, but we didn't know he knew Dave Hall. It was just funny. Everything just was like a marriage. With everything we started touching at that time, it was just in place. Because it, it's interesting, because Dave Hall and Kenny Green used to do the songwriting and the mm -hmm. uh, production between them. Right. But it seemed like at some point, they stopped working together? Was What was that whole story about? Why, why did they stop working together? Um, well, you know Dave Hall did stuff on the second album as well. He did a couple Funny, of tracks. Funny How Times Fly. And Love's On The Way, is yes. it? Yeah. And um, it wasn't uh, a bitter relationship at all. It was Dave got busy with the Madonna Project and things like that. Um, I think Dave had a little differences with Untouchables. At that time, we were still trying to decipher what we're going to do when it comes to untouchables yeah. um, so we was trying to grow ourselves um, I don't think there was a, a beef between Dave and Kenny at all never was it when it came to money at all okay. so it was just we toured so long I mean on our first album we was on the road for two years straight we missed two Thanksgivings two Christmas with our family just two years straight nonstop. Um, how did your moms feel about that my mom's a pastor she she's cool <laughs> she's cool she wasn't cool when we did, you know, that dirty song, but she was cool. Which was Come Inside. Come Inside. Yeah. Okay. And so what are you guys, what's your plans now? What's, uh, um, what are you up to now? Actually, let me make this clear. We're not trying to replace Kenny. We are just adding a new addition to the group. Kenny's gonna always be with us in spirit. We even um, planning on adding Kenny on the album. Um, the songs that Kenny are going to be on the album is going to be highlighted on the album. Um, based on our core fans, they still want to hear Kenny. They miss Kenny. So we need to add Kenny on this album. Um, we grew as well as writers. Everything we've done so far, we wrote as a collective group, um, including a new member. He's a great writer as well. Um, he's, he's a little younger than us, and he brings a, a new style and edge to the group. And, you know. Can he sing? He can blow. He can blow. He can blow. What's his name? His name is John. John Williams. John Williams. Okay. John Williams. Believe me, we ran through a good 50 guys. Because I, you, you, I heard for, uh, I think it was about a year ago, there was, uh, I don't know what to say. yeah, you know what I'm about to say, <laughs> a, that little rumor floating around that you were going to do some stuff with, uh, replace Ken, uh, the uh, lead vocal, lead vocalist as, uh, you going to use Horace Brown? Um, what happened there? Here's the deal with Horace. Horace and I and the group of friends, that was more of an idea that Buddy wanted to try. And it's almost like when you make a cake and you know that the cake you love to eat, your grandmother makes, and someone else comes in and tries to do the same thing and it just doesn't taste the same. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That, that, that tone, it was a certain tone that we were looking for that just wasn't there. Horace was great as Horace. But as the group, that tone just wasn't there for us to collect it, you know. Okay. And it, we felt that, you know, it's best to not go forward with that. And, like, intro released two albums. You had, obviously, uh, the self-titled album in 93. Mm -hmm. You had A New Life in 95. 
Was there an album called uh, Mesimo or Mesimo in 97 or something well, like the, that? The but names, we played with the names. We never released the album. Uh, we were in the middle of uh, working on an album and then, uh, let's keep it real. Uh, we, Kenny got a suspension from the group um, after we got off a tour in Europe. It was us and Drew Hill in Europe. And after we got off a tour, we decided to take a break. You know, I, the truth is the suspension. There was something that went down when it came to us in an interview process with the radio station, a huge radio station. And I don't need to dig into that, but it wasn't professional. So we felt that, you know, somebody had to be reprimanded for that. So we decided to do that. After we did that, you know, he took it very bad. Meaning he thought we was kicking him out the group. We weren't kicking him out the group. We just felt that, you know, you just can't do certain things. This is the business. All right, without mentioning the radio station, can you tell me what the details were around that? You don't have to, but if you can. Yeah, I mean, why not? We pretty much had an interview that was syndicated throughout the United States. Sure. And during that interview, Kenny pretty much laid his head down on the table and pretty much ignored the guy while he was talking. After the interview, me and this guy, he's a big disc jockey, I built a relationship with him. I knew when he first met his wife, she was his girlfriend at the time, he used to call me and everything. He said, Jeff, I'm not gonna even lie to you. What happened today has never ever happened to me before. And for Kenny to lay his head down and disrespect me during the interview, I can pull your records in many states right now if I wanted to. When I saw that, I felt, you know, we had to step up to the plate and fix that. That couldn't happen again. Okay. And that's why the suspension came about. And from the suspension, he ended up trying to, you know, release his whole stuff and so forth, but that didn't work. People wanted to see the intro. Okay. So. And when you have a when you have a lead vocalist like Kenny Green. One of the best. One of the best, for sure. Um, how do you, you said you had like 50 people that you were thinking of coming yes. into the group. How, how do you go about that process? How do you go about finding a replacement for the Kenny Green? Well, it's not about a replacement. You gotta understand, what happened back in 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, happened back then. Sure. Whatever you're gonna do now, you gotta always think about recreating yourself. So you gotta almost go to a different direction, but stay with the same ingredients. But we're not trying to find someone that sounds like Kenny, and we gotta let everybody know that. We're not trying to replace Kenny, or trying to have someone sound like Kenny. We like someone to be somewhere in that range, only because it's a certain tone we look for when it comes to our vocals. Sure. But, you know, at the end of the day, some people that worked with us in the past love what we're doing so far, and they love the direction we're going in. And we're just gonna stick with that. We're not gonna try to, have somebody try to be Kenny. It's not gonna happen. Kenny was before his time, and I can say that over and over again. He was before his time. Kenny was one of the best. His tone was incredible, and that's what sold me the moment I heard him over the phone. Sold me.